Hi, welcome to Clearbrook Studio. I have a little city boy rockability. Well, you're gonna miss me early in the morning, one of these days, yeah. Early in the morning when I'm away And you'll be sorry for the times I cried And you'll be sorry for the times you lied Well, you're gonna miss me early in the morning One of these days, oh yeah Well, you know a rolling stone, it don't gather no moss and you cross that bridge when it's time to cross. Well, you broke my heart when you said goodbye. Now the milk is spilt and you're gonna cry early in the morning. You're gonna know that I was right. Yeah, 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 early in the morning when there's nobody to hold you tight. Oh, you're gonna want me, want me back You're gonna miss the best man you ever had Yeah, you're gonna miss me early in the morning One of these days, oh yeah I say you're gonna want me, want me back Want the best man you ever had you're gonna want me, you're gonna miss me one of these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Early in the morning, a lot of folks think that Buddy Holly wrote that song because Buddy Holly recorded it, but Buddy Holly didn't write that song. That song was written by Bobby Darren back before anybody even knew who Bobby Darren was. He hadn't had a hit yet. Uh, Bobby Darren intended to record it himself, but he got in some kind of a dust-up with um, his recording company, and somehow the song got taken away from Bobby Darren and given to uh, Buddy Holly, who jumped right on it and recorded it in the summer of 1958 uh, and had a big uh, uh, so-so hit with it. He did okay. Back then, in the summer of 58, in 58 in general, just about anything Buddy Holly recorded was a hit. Uh, Buddy Holly uh, is a source of inspiration to nerds everywhere, including me. Uh, conventionally unattractive. Uh, this guy was rejected by record studio after record studio after record studio. Nobody wanted to record his stuff. They all thought he was lousy. They threw him out. One, one record producer, after he heard him audition, said, that's the worst song I've ever heard. Get out of here. So he couldn't get anybody to record his stuff. He found a little podunk two-bit recording studio in Clovis, New Mexico and started recording in 1956 with absolutely no success whatsoever. His first several recordings just didn't sell. And then, all of a sudden, in May of 1957, well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye, and that'll be the day when you made me cry, and that'll be the day, May 1957, was a monster hit for Buddy Holly. It was followed by hit after hit after hit after hit for 21 months, just over a year and a half, <sighs> until his death at the age of 22 in a small private plane on a bitter cold stormy day in Iowa in February 1959. <laughs> day the music died. So much for Buddy Holly. Interesting fellow. And that leads me to the next thing that I want to do, which is uh, 
Becoming Clearbrook. Hi, welcome to my studio. By the way, you may remember on the last recording I pointed out my uh, avatar, or was it this way? I can't remember which way I pointed, but then I realized afterwards that there are two different ways to get to my channel on YouTube, and on one of them, Clearbrook is over here. Hi, Clearbrook. And on the other one, my Clearbrook avatar is over here. Hey, man, how you doing there? So if you were watching the one where I was pointing the wrong way, I'm sure you thought I was confused because I was confused. Carol, a fan, isn't that nice? Carol, a fan in the city by the bay writes, Dear Clearbrook, who are your greatest musical influences and how have they influenced you? Hmm. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate that question. Here's the way it goes. Along the way over the years, I've been influenced by guys like Gene Vincent, Eric Burden, Buddy Holly, Brian Seltzer, Ringo Starr, Tom Petty. You kind of get the pattern here? Hi, darling. It's my cat, Ugly. It's made a return appearance. All of these guys are uh, not conventionally attractive. Some of them had very limited uh, ability as musicians. Some were good musicians. Some could sing. Some of them can't sing worth a hoot. Now, all of them, though, if they had any one thing in common, it's that any talent scout coming across them early in their careers would have said, don't give up your day job. These are guys who were not destined to be successful in the music business, but they believed in themselves, often to a nearly delusional degree, like Buddy Holly was always convinced that he was absolutely irresistible to women and absolutely irresistible to the recording public, when in fact he wasn't really, he was very resistible. Uh, he was resisted right and left. But he just never gave up, and that's true of the other guys that I mentioned too. They never gave up. They just kept on keeping on. So, uh, eventually, somehow they got a breakthrough and they became wildly successful. And that's how they influenced me. Not by becoming wildly successful, but by having faith in themselves and never giving up characteristics which I found hard to come by, but worked at as best I could. Now then, one last thing you may notice. See, it's always confusing because I look at the screen when I point, and I want to be pointing this way, but it, it's, never mind, it, everything's backwards. If you look over my shoulder here, you'll notice a clothes rack with clothes on it. Where did that come from? Well, the deal is, I'm living large here. Yeah, I've moved into my studio. Isn't that nice? I appreciate you dropping by for this little visit. I'll look forward to seeing you again. Oh, and Carol, thank you for that nice email. And for the rest of you, you know, that's an email that's now from the C people. That's Colleen, Carlos, and Carol. So the C people uh, have all written me nice emails that I could respond to. Now, I'd like to hear from A's through the Z's. Uh, send me a note, raise a question, make an observation, whatever the spirit moves you to do, and I'll, I'll use it on the Clearbrook Studio Show. So... <laughs> Have a great day. I hope to see you again soon. Bye now.